is Frank Everett, and welcome to Frank's Files. It is my privilege today to be at one of the most storied jewelry houses in all of New York, and certainly the most beautiful jewelry salon, Verdura. Also, it's my privilege to be with Nico Landrigan, the president of Verdura. Nico, thank you very much for having us. Thrilled to have you. Let's just jump right in. Who was Foucault? Uh, well, Foucault uh, was a fascinating man. He was a uh, nobleman, he was a Sicilian duke, and he was born in a palazzo in Palermo, and his grandmother was a princess, and his father was a duke. Uh, he inherited his title uh, in 1923, uh, but the fortune went to a cousin. So, ah. like so many people who have had to reinvent themselves, he took his talent for really painting originally, mm -hmm. and through interesting connections and introductions, Cole Porter introduced him to Coco Chanel, right. and he moved to Paris and started designing textiles, actually, originally for Coco. Textiles? And then, wow. very soon thereafter, through their friendship, started designing her personal jewelry as a favor. Right, I know he took her on a trip where he, he first exposed her to Byzantine art, which ended up really inspiring the famous Maltese cross cuffs that she wore forever. Well, those cuffs really are that seminal point of Verdura's career. That, yeah. They're it, and we're very lucky to have bought them back. So the Maltese cross cuffs are actually the ones at the Met. That's right. Right? But this one, I think, is also Chanel's, yes? It is, and it's also in our museum collection, about 111 pieces that we don't sell. And still very much in that Byzantine style, even though it's not the classic Maltese cross. Very much. Large, colorful gemstones pressed into gold. Yeah. Um, very, almost, almost barbaric in their boldness. Amazing. So now let's get Fedora from Chanel into his own business and more importantly to New York. When did he come to New York? 1934. Diana Breland had yep. said, you know, Paris is great, but you really should go check out this new world thing happening. Yeah. She was the one who introduced him to Paul Flato. Uh -huh. He worked for Flato and became his head designer from 1934 to 1939 when he actually had this Got opportunity it. to start his own business uh, here hmm. in New York. For me, another real hallmark of the house of Verdura and Verdura the man is the incredible incredible relationships that he had with clients. Nobody did it like Verdura. I have to go right to this necklace. This to me is one of the great holy grails of the jewelry world. This incredible emerald scarf necklace. These stones actually were bought by William and Dorothy Paley. Bill uh, started CBS and as he grew his business, uh, he decided at one point to go to South America mm -hmm. and buy up um, radio and television stations and his wife Dorothy was invited along, and what do you do while your husband's buying radio stations you shop. in Columbia? Right. You buy some emeralds. So Why she, not? she came back to New York with a little bag of these cabochon emeralds, and she handed them to Foco, to Verdura, and said, listen Foco, I, I, I'm not really sure why I bought these or what for, but I, I think it'd make a great necklace. Can you come up with something that I can wear in the daytime? <laughs> So, you know, he sort of double-checked his ground rules. Okay, no diamonds. No diamonds. Daytime. And he came up with three different designs. Wow. And actually, the title page of the Verdura book is the one she chose. It's so simple. And I love just because there are no diamonds, it's perfect for daytime, right? <laughs> exactly. Perfect day look. I think another one of the great artist-patron relationships were with the Melons. They really worked closely with him on designs and commissions. Paul especially, um, it's worth noting, was one of the great patrons of Verdura. He was a, a, a patron of the arts, and he treated For jewelry sure. as a form of art. I mean, I don't know the total number of pieces that he bought over the years, but he single-handedly probably paid a good portion of the rent. Now we're gonna show you another famously storied piece of jewelry. This one possibly illustrates the relationship between a jeweler and a client more than anything I've ever seen. As you can tell, it's, it's actually a, a tiara. And this was designed for Betsy Cushing Whitney, one of the three famous Cushing sisters. And it was commissioned in 1957 after her husband, John Hay Whitney, was made ambassador to Great Britain. The protocol goes that when your husband is presented at court as the new ambassador, one must wear a tiara in the presence of the queen in a formal occasion. Mrs. Whitney thought it would be fun to go to Verdura, to Folco, and uh, give him the commission. The charming end of this story is that she, shortly after my dad bought the business in the mid-1980s, brought it in, in this box, put it on his desk, and he was looking for a stone missing or something out of shape that he had to repair. Why is it here? And she said, Mr. Landrigan, I'm giving it to you. It, <laughs> it belongs here. And Nico, is it true that she only wore this the one time? the one time, Buckingham Palace, and that was it. Amazing. 
Incredible. Why wear it again, right? <laughs> You've been seen. You've been seen, right? So today, who is the Verdura woman? I think the women who are collecting now, they, they love the color, the boldness. There is an added interest in history and sophistication mm -hmm. in that most of these pieces were designed for someone. And right. these, these someones tended to be fairly interesting people. One iconic design that I think of with, with Verdura always is the wrapped heart. Um, here are two examples. We have a vintage and a new. Both are for sale. So you do sell some vintage pieces, right? We do. We buy back vintage pieces whenever we can yep. and uh, obviously make new pieces from the original archives. Right. Well, like this one, I know, is a very popular design. It is. That you still produce. Um, some other great designs here. Uh, th this, of course, you can't you can't talk about Verdura without mentioning this curve link bracelet. It's one of his earliest designs. Really? Yes. And Greta Garbo made it famous. One of the many fabulous things. There are a lot of other things here that I'm going to look at. Thank you so much, Nico. A this great has been Frank. the best morning ever. Incredible jewels. I love talking with you. Thank I can you talk for with you all day. <laughs> thank you for watching, and thank you, Nico. Thank you. Frank. Thanks a lot.